Um, today we're all here to listen to Glenn Landrum talk about the introduction to Gutenberg and the future of WordPress editing. Grant is a leader of digital teams focused on strategy and high-scale high digital projects for companies such as Microsoft, Google, Adobe, and more. Recently is the Vice President of Client Strategy at Tenna, a leading agency in enterprise WordPress development. Grant managed digital strategy teams managing some of the largest, most complex WordPress implementations on the web. He's been using WordPress both personally and professionally for 10 years, more than 10 years, and met his wife while consulting on her WordPress blog. Today, he's going to walk you through an introduction to Gutenberg, a new editor coming into WordPress 5.0, touching on the immediate, immediate changes you can expect, as well as the impact on the future of WordPress. And afterwards, if we've got questions, um, I'm going to be bringing this microphone to you, so I'll come back up. Love it. Thank you. Awesome. Well, welcome, everybody. It's a pleasure to be here with you. This is an introduction to Gutenberg and the future of editing. Um, there are some awesome Gutenberg talks coming at you guys later today, uh, talking about storytelling and blogging with Gutenberg, SEO, and then I think a couple of afternoon talks are going to dig into more of the development of the hood. Um, but the organizers and I thought that it would be a good idea to first dig, just dig into an introduction. For those of you who have not uh, had the opportunity to poke around with Gutenberg yet, maybe you have a little bit, but you want to understand a little bit more about the bigger picture of what's going on. So the first half of the presentation is going to just be an introduction, um, talk a little bit about what Gutenberg is, how it's different from what there is now, uh, what it really means and the impact and the scope of it. And then I'm going to fast forward a little bit and talk about what it kind of means for the larger WordPress project that's coming down the road, and how you all think about Gutenberg as you talk about it. Um, with your customers, if you're a freelancer or an agency, um, or just how to think about it for yourself as you manage your own site. So let's dive right in. Um, well, first, uh, you can get the slides if you want to follow along. There's lots of screenshots and things, so I've got a bit.ly there, Gutenprez, uh, if you want to follow along there. Uh, so, dive right in. So Gutenberg, it's important to think about when you start thinking about Gutenberg, for those of you who haven't looked at it yet, is that this isn't an iteration, this isn't a small update. Uh, this is a transformation. This is a brand new way of building and editing content in WordPress. Both under the hood, technically speaking, how the editor is built and how it functions and how it delivers content and, and mirrors back in the front end, as well as the UI. This is going to be a big impact for end users. Uh, it's words like revolution, right, have been thrown around as far as what this update means for WordPress and what it means for editing and writing content, as well as building pages and building sites. Let's take a really quick look at uh, <clears throat> visually what we're talking about. So this is the classic editor. You guys should all be really familiar with this. Uh, you've got one big blob of content. And, and the terminology I really like is, is blobs to blocks. Uh, blob is a content strategy term that's been thrown around for a while now. Um, but that's really, uh, philosophically, uh, the, one of the big changes is we're moving from a blob of content in a content editor to blocks of content in a content editor. So classic editor you guys are all really familiar with. You got one big blob of content in the classic editor, and that translates to the front end. It outputs everything into the content of a post or a page. Everybody should be really familiar with this, super simple and straightforward. In a Gutenberg world, we're moving to blocks of content. We've got a title block, we've got a paragraph block, a paragraph block, and you can have all sorts of different blocks. But we're moving to more modular, more visual, more block-based editor. And on the surface, this feels kind of straightforward, which is good. That's how it should feel. On the front end, same type of thing. Your blocks get output into the, into the content of your post or your page. There are tons and tons and tons of blocks that are going to ship with the first version of this. For those of you who have already installed the Gutenberg plugin, you've seen a lot of these blocks. Uh, as recently as two days ago, blocks are still being removed and new blocks being added as far as what's coming in the 5.0 release. Um, these are just a few of the default blocks. Basically everything you'd expect, paragraphs, headings, uh, quotes, galleries, uh, but also some new blocks, a lot of layout blocks, uh, column block, button block. There's a lot of new things coming as we think about how to use a more visual, more block-based editor in kind of the new WordPress world. So really quickly, for those of you who don't know me, I'm Grant Landrum. Um, had a great introduction, uh, but I just want to, to note that I'm at Grant Landrum on Twitter. If you want to connect with me, I'd love to connect with you all. Send me questions. If you have any questions during the presentation, I, I can read them off Twitter at the end, or we can go ahead and uh, read them live. So. So we're moving from blocks to blocks, right? It's a fundamental, almost revolutionary change to WordPress. 
One thing that I think is worth doing is stopping and asking why. Why make such a big change, right? We all know change is hard, particularly in web software. <clears throat> Excuse me. WordPress is doing great, right? Over 30% of the internet, all we hear about is WordPress is growing in popularity, that it's easy to use, that it's straightforward, and one of the reasons why people choose WordPress is because it's intuitive and everybody knows it. So why make a fundamental change? Why make a revolutionary change to the way that one of the core things about WordPress works? Well, a few reasons. One is creating a more visual editing experience. So with the proliferation of online site building tools, things like Squarespace, Wix, uh, even page builder tools for WordPress, a more modern web user is getting more used to and actually is expecting a more visual editing experience. Think about medium, right? Editing, where you're editing actually what your thing looks like. Gutenberg promises to give us a bit more of a visual editing experience. And this is, this is a promise in which I think it really, really delivers. And is one where WordPress needs to catch back up and get a little bit ahead of what the broader CMS market is delivering. If we were to stick with the classic editor, uh, you know, I think the frustrations that come along with that classic editor. Who knows the term save and surprise? Anybody heard that? It's one that gets tossed around in agency a whole lot where you know, a client or somebody is editing in WordPress and they lay out their paragraphs and they put an image and they write a line of the image and they think it's, everything looks great and they save and they go look at their page and it looks surprised. Nothing like what it looked like in the classic editor. Maybe it's because their theme styles are doing something a little bit different with it. Maybe it's because they thought they put that image floated in between paragraph two and three, but really in the HTML it's floated midway through the third paragraph and it shows up walking on the front end. Gutenberg promises to get rid of a lot of that safety and surprise by making the back end a much more visual editing experience um, and, and translating that and, and really showing you what, what it's like that you're, that you're going to be editing. So the next reason is more granular control. This is almost, feels super straightforward and, and we almost take it for granted when we talk about block-based editors. Um, but because these are individual blocks, this is, a, this is such a fundamental change um, in the granular control that we have over blocks. So in this block, uh, you'll see I've got a title, a normal paragraph, and then I've started to customize this middle paragraph. We've got the block settings bar over here, and I've selected a color background, color text, and I've been able to, to highlight out the specific paragraph and customize it right from the GUI of my editor. Now this, this could be possible in the previous classic editor, but you probably have to edit some HTML, add a class, and then edit that class with CSS. To your normal average end user, that's just not an accessible thing to do. It's certainly not intuitive. With a Gutenberg editor, this is just the tip of the iceberg of the type of modular control that you're going to be able to have uh, over things like paragraphs. Let's take our image example that I, that I threw up previously about the right and left aligned. Now images, there are their own blocks. It's an image block. We've got this great settings bar right on the right-hand side where I can control everything about the image, the width, the height, the alignment, and it'll live update here amongst the other blocks and show me amongst the other blocks how is this going to look. Much more visual, much more granular, much more accessible and easy for the end user to use. So the third reason and probably one of the most exciting, one of the things that I was most excited uh, as an agency person when I first started using Gutenberg is more powerful editing and page building. So things that you previously just could not do in the classic editor without short codes and everybody knows short codes, mixed bag, right? Most of the time, not great. Um, things like columns, right, are now going to be extremely easy to do, right within the UI for you as, as well as for your end user. Things that you might have had to build a page template for before and do on the PHP and CSS level, uh, or again, short codes, you'll be able to do buttons. Things as uh, straightforward as spacers. Let's go back. Spacer, so you know, we can add bottom margin to our paragraphs, but what if you have a couple images in a row and you don't like the margins being added? You don't want a lot of margin between the first and second image, but you want a little bit of margin after the third image. Things like spacer, a spacer block will allow you to create space within your post or page wherever you want. Uh, another use case I like here is giving a block quote a little bit of room to breathe, mm -hmm. right? Let's say you have a quote you really want to stand out. I'm going to bump up the text size. But then I bump up the text size, and there's not a whole lot of space in between the two paragraphs on either side. So throw a couple of spacer blocks on either side, give that block a little bit of room to breathe. People are going to be able to more powerfully build and lay out pages and posts with these uh, more visual editors and actually see what it's going to look like in the back end before they publish. 
So a block that just got added on Friday's uh, beta is the media and text block. Woohoo! Uh, yeah. <laughs> How many landing pages have we all built where it's a media item and some text on it, and then maybe we've got some center text below it, and then media item on the right, and text on the left, and then some center text below it, right, laying those pages out? And that we would have either had to engage in a page builder type type situation or go ahead and build that template from scratch. Now these are things that you can very modularly, very quickly set up and do for Reusable content blocks. This is one of my favorite. Um, so any block that you create, you can go ahead and press a button and say, I want to make it a reusable block. You save it. So I'm saving, let's say I have a, a profile, like a profile of me that I want to put at the top or the bottom of every article that I write. But I don't want to build it into the single.php template because there's other authors on my site and I don't want it showing up at the bottom of every single post. I can create a reusable profile block, just a paragraph block. I save it as Grant's profile block. And then anytime I want to use that on any other post or any other page around the site, I just search for it, up, oh, and there it is, saved right away, insert it into it. And the cool thing is those blocks are all linked. So if my profile updates, I go and update it in one place and it updates across every single post, every single page is used on the site. And that you can just do just like that. Really, really cool block. And last but not least, widgets in dynamic content. So you can insert widgets into any post or page. So here I'm going to insert a latest post widget. Just search for widgets, pop it in there. But this could be anything. This could be a MailChimp sign up widget. This could be any old widget that you have activated on your site. And I've dropped three of my latest posts in the middle of a post or a page. I can choose layout options like list or grid. This can be customized with CSS. I can add custom classes to it that can be targeted with CSS. Just really powerful post and page building tools that are going to be accessible to you with the default blocks that are going to ship. And again, so all of this stuff was probably doable before, either via short codes or via page builder plugins. But the cool thing is that many of those solutions are definitely not easy to use. Right? Not as easy as the class editor. Right? They took to the learning curve and many of our clients just couldn't end up learning how to use it. Right? There wasn't the time or the investment there. Um, and they certainly weren't intuitive. Right? Like if, if easy to use is a bar here, like intuitive is a little bit higher of a bar, right? where it just kind of makes sense and people understand, understand how to use it. Um, and it's certainly the higher bar is keeping up with the modern trend of visual page building and visual CMSs that are around there in the market. And Gutenberg does a really good job of catching WordPress up to, to that broader market. So a good quote I like from that uh, is that users will finally be able to build the sites they've seen in their imaginations and will never have to see a short code again. Uh, I think for those of us who build sites, we kind of take short codes for granted in those, those tricky ways that we've found, uh, found a way to build more robust functionality into our editors and our page builders. But they're really, really frustrating for end users. End users don't have to get those things. The syntax is clunky. Every short code is set up a little bit differently with different variables. Some don't, you don't need variables. Um, so it's, it's really nice to be thinking beyond uh, the tiny MC editor uh, and thinking about you know, the more powerful page building editing experiences that you might to bring us. So one of, the, one of the features that I'm the most excited about, um, and it's one of the most forward-looking features uh, of, of the new Gutenberg editor, uh, but it's not gotten as much publicity. It's not been written about as much. I think I've only seen a couple of people talking about this one. Um, is the idea of templating. So the examples that I've shown you before, it's kind of a blank slate. You can add a title block, you add a paragraph block, and you start to build a post or a page from scratch. Pretty much what you think of as a traditional CMS editing experience. Blank slate, you sit down and you start writing. But as we all know, at least those who build websites for clients, you give a client a blank slate of a page or a post, and they're not always going to deliver on that vision of what you designed for them. Right? You give them four or five page templates, you set up a couple examples, and the first time they go to create a new page on their own, they call you and they say, it's not working how I like and expect it, or you, know, you visit their site, and it just doesn't quite look like what you designed, because maybe they forgot to do something in the way that you built it for them. So the idea of templating in Gutenberg is that you can actually, by page template or post type, create a default set of blocks that are already pre-added to the page when they go to create a new page or a new post. So in this example, this person has added a title, a full width image, a couple of headings and some paragraphs, a button with placeholders in them. You can define all of this in the blocks API, and you can even make it so that they cannot remove blocks. Right? You can create a custom post type, maybe it's uh, 
um, team members, right? And every single team member has to have these six blocks in there filled out in order to, to deliver on that vision, deliver on that visual design. And all they have to do is go in and fill it out every time. So you can already do this in the Blocks API um, that's coming out soon. And this is going to be one of those APIs that I think is going to be built on uh, and really expanded. Where uh, I think theme authors, right? How many times have, have you heard about people buying custom themes and then they get in there and they can't really figure out how to set it up and make it look like the demo of, that, that they saw online? This is probably going to be something leveraged by theme authors where they set up page templates and post types in a very customized way where folks can fill it out. All they got to do is fill out the blocks. This is really exciting. Cool, so what I just talked about is a lot of the major features that are going to be shipping in the upcoming 5.0 release of WordPress, the new Gutenberg editor going from a blob-based editor to a block-based editor. But I want to talk a little bit about the future, about what's coming after that, because what a lot of what most people don't know is that the Gutenberg editor uh, revolutionizing the page and the post creation process is just phase one of this grander vision. It's just phase one of this project. Uh, so what the Gutenberg editor, block-based editor does is it lays a foundation for bigger things when it comes to page building and customization. So I'm going to talk about a couple of different examples and kind of try to paint this, this vision for what's coming down the pipe. But now that we have modular blocks in the editor, think about something like co-editing, something that has not previously been possible without ripping out the editor altogether and, and shoving in something completely different. But imagine that because it's modular, somebody could build a plugin that that adds states to each of the blocks and allows different people to be editing different blocks at the same time, right? So this block's being edited by an admin, and I'm down here, Grant is down here adding a block. This doesn't currently exist. I don't know if there's any ongoing work on a plugin like this, but I imagine in the future, because we're more modular broken down, we'll no longer be locked out on a page or post level basis like we are now. We may be able to get in there and edit together, which would expand WordPress into a whole new market of newsrooms, and high volume sites where you might want to have 25, 30, 35 people working on the same piece of content at a time. People like the New York Times built their own CMS specifically to build their own custom publishing workflows because they wanted upwards of 50 people to be working on the same breaking news story all at the same time. This would open up WordPress to a market like that. Custom blocks. So custom blocks are already being developed by a lot of developers out there who have seen the writing on the wall. Um, there's already a number of custom blocks that you can install and, and, and test, uh, but we're going to see more and more rapid custom block development over the coming uh, weeks, months, and years as, as WordPress 5.0 comes out. This is one actually being worked on by the automatic uh, core community team, so Mel Choice, uh, Ian Dunn, who I think is uh, popping around here somewhere, uh, but this is for the WordCamp websites. Um, this would be a speaker's block. So what you'd have is you'd enter the speakers block and you can either output all of the speakers from the speakers custom post type or you can pick specific speakers to output and it'll automatically go grab all those posts, output them visually, how they're going to show up and give you a bunch of really cool options. Do I, what size do I want them to be? Do I want the images to be there? What are the alignment of the images? Do I want it in a grid or a list? Right? These are, these are ways to build pages rapidly, dynamically with content around your site. This is just, again, the tip of the iceberg of the custom block development that you guys are going to see uh, coming out of uh, after Google Brothers release. So finally, I want to talk about the WYSIWYG problem. So Morton Red Hendrickson did a great talk about this in WordCamp US. Um, great, great talk. Um, he spent about 30 minutes talking about it. I only spent about five. Um, but this is one of the most exciting things that is on the radar, and it's probably one of the more ambitious goals of the Gutenberg block-based editor project. Um, but that is, uh, what you see has never really been what you've gotten when it comes to building a post or a page. And that is to say, remember my example of the classic editor, it's a blob of content, that blob of content gets output on your page, but that's not all that's going on in your site. Right? And for an end user to build a page and looking at the editor and just be controlling that area of the site is not a very intuitive thing. It's not really what you see is what you get. It's what you see is what you get within this tiny little box, maybe, right? If you do it perfectly and you have editor styles. What about, so Gutenberg is moving to a block base, right? And that's making this part better, but it's still confined to this, the content area, right? What about all these other areas? What about your header, your navigation? What about your sidebar? What about your footer? What about all the other modular areas of your site? You still don't have great visibility in the post and page editor into how your site is actually going to look, right? We at Tenoch, we saw a lot of uh, conflicts happen here when it happens um, 
things like writing a story about you know uh, nonprofits, uh, outreach communications in southern Africa, uh, and it's a really heavy, really sensitive topic. Maybe a deep, you know, two thousand, three thousand word expose, uh, and you know, it looks great in the editor and all that, on all that stuff, and preview it, and even that looks really good. But then when it gets served up, the things that are in the sidebar are really culturally insensitive ads. It's like, that doesn't work very well, right? It's a, still a disjointed experience. And the first version of the block based editor doesn't really solve that. The first version of block based editor is still really focused on this content area. <clears throat> Another part that's really, really frustrating for uh, your end user is that they edit this page and they get it looking how they want, but in order to get the other areas of the site looking how they want, they gotta go to a number of different places within their admin. Appearance menus to get your menu just right. Appearance customized maybe to make sure your site title is the logo, is your site tagline there. Maybe appearance theme options because maybe if they're running a custom theme, there are tons of theme options that they need to customize to get their header looking the way they want. You gotta go to appearance widgets to get your sidebar. And if you have multiple sidebars, great. If you don't, you're stuck with one setup. Appearance menus for the footer, appearance customized for the footer, right? You gotta go to all these places just to get your single poster page looking exactly how you want it to look. That's not a great experience. And the block based editor doesn't really solve that. Again, it's focused, focused more on the poor thing, but what if it could? What if it could solve all these other areas, right? And that's the vision. That's the vision that, and the ambition that this core project has for this block based editor is. What if we could take the same concept of taking one admin screen with a blob of content, moving that into blocks, moving that into a more visual editor, and apply that to all of these other areas of your site, and create a more seamless, more visual, and more intuitive site building, site layout, template building, experience. What if all of these things were blocks? Block, 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 and you can add as many blocks as you want. What if every widget was a block? What if any footer items were a block? What if everything was a block that you can visually lay out, choose from a plethora of custom blocks, build your own blocks? What if you weren't confined the traditional content types of menus and widgets and, and uh, posts and all of those things? So this is from the actual WordPress handbook that's been up for a while. A rough roadmap is V1 of this block-based editor project is the posted page editor. That's what we spent a lot of time talking about today. That's been a major focus of the debate around Gutenberg and what it does. But second is the page template editor. <coughs> what if you could create entire templates with blocks and arranging them? And only a part of that template was the content that you're actually writing. Another part of that is other things. And then three, what if you could build your entire site in blocks, visually from the back end of your site? One of my favorite quotes, uh, for Morton, who is, is leagues ahead of me on this debate, and definitely is a guy worth Googling and checking out his talks at WordCamp. He's, he's got a great article that I link to in the resources uh, at the end of this slide deck. Um, but he says in the future, after the fulfillment of the Gutenbergian revolution, as he calls it, um, you will go to WordPress to create views by writing some content and are pulling in different blocks of content to the whole. This is really, really interesting because it kind of turns the whole intuitive familiarity of WordPress on its head. And that can be a little bit scary, uh, but, I, but I like the way that they are starting with the post and page editor where it makes a lot of sense, right? Where there's a lot of frustration from the users. They're going to kind of matriculate this, uh, this new world out there, uh, get people used to that, and then over time we'll see this start to spread out, out around their sites. So what happened? Covered quite a bit. We've talked about what's coming. We've talked about what's coming up in the future. So, quick review. We've got the final 5.0 beta 5 coming out uh, in just a few days. I think that's third Wednesday or Thursday. Um, we've got the release candidate one scheduled for the 19th, and we've got the 5.0 release scheduled for 11:27. This just got. This is the new schedule posted as of Friday. So this just got bumped out about a week on these deadlines. So WordPress 5.0 is coming, and it's coming really, really soon. First thing is don't freak out, right? Like this is a revolution, this is a big change, but there's a lot to be excited about and there's really not a whole lot to, to be afraid of and freak out about for a few reasons. Uh, one, you can start testing now. The Gutenberg plugin is readily available. It's been readily available for a long time. I've been running it in production on my site for a long time. It is buggy, right? I think you know a lot of people who are tuned into this conversation, there are a lot of concerns around whether it's ready or not. There's bugginess, there's a lack of accessibility of certain things in the editor. These are real good problems that a lot of people are focused on and that I know we're gonna solve. 
but it's not a reason to, to, to shy away from updating to 5.0, it's not a reason to shy away from starting to test. This is absolutely the future of what WordPress is going to look like, um, and it's not really worth dragging your feet as far as updating and really getting under the hood and learning this stuff. Uh, so install the Gutenberg plug out in your local, install it on staging, you don't need to install it on production yet, um, but get testing with it, get familiar with it. This is gonna be a big part of the conversation when it comes to any of the WordPress for the next three to five years, right? Uh, use the resources available to you. There are tons and tons of themes and plugins and articles, and there's so much emphasis on this. A lot of popular plugins like Gravity Forums, Yoast, and others already have Gutenberg compatible interfaces, Gutenberg compatible custom blocks, at TenUp, uh, TenUp has already developed a couple of custom plugins that work with Gutenberg. A lot of folks are really getting ahead of this. So there's a ton of resources, a ton of really cool stuff that previously used to be a paid plugin or used to cost hundreds of hours of development that, that you can now do with a plugin because uh, people are trying to get ahead of this Gutenberg thing. Um, go ahead and upgrade. Even if you don't want to use Gutenberg, go ahead and upgrade when 5.0 comes out. The, cla uh, the classic editor um, is always, it's going to be available for at least a couple of years as a plugin. Um, so you can just upgrade and install the classic editor, and the admin will be be very similar to what it was before. Uh, but always, always stay upgraded. You want to stay upgraded so you get the latest and greatest from the software. Um, and really, like the the biggest thing is just start building. Start. It's really cool. It's very, very powerful. Um, at Ten Up, I was already starting to build sites, uh, little prototypes uh, for pitching strategies with Gutenberg. And it was a really, really cool way to very, very quickly prototype admin experiences, prototype front-end experiences, prototype workflows for, for editorial. Um, and it's something that anybody can do really, really quickly once you get the, get the hang of the tool. Mm -hmm. And follow along. Um, because this project is coming out so hot, because it's such a big part of the future of WordPress, um, there's going to be a ton of really rapid iteration, a ton of really, really rapid innovation. So I have no doubt within the next six months, there's going to be some people who are going to turn Gutenberg on its head and do some really, really cool things because it's React-based, because it's more visual, because it's more modular. The sky is the limit as far as what, what we can do with this technology. Um, so definitely follow along. The, or the Gutenberg handbook is a good place to go to, to bone up on this. And I've got a bunch of links and resources coming uh, up next. Um, the handbook's a good place. Uh, Make, blog, core, uh, they're publishing a lot, a lot of updates on this. I grabbed that screenshot for the... Uh, WordCamp site custom plugin just from the make blog. Big Mel uh, published a post the other day that was just like, we're working on a custom block for speakers. They posted a bunch of comps and envision links, so I went through there and looked at what they're doing. So it's really cool to go in and see what the what the leaders in this space are working on as far as custom blocks. It's all there and readily accessible for you. So uh, just a couple of special thanks. I want to thank Helen uh, from Tenna, Morton. Uh, Mark Rue Wiley, who's here, part of the Seattle community, the, all the organizers, the Gutenberg team, Team Ten Up, um, and just all the people that helped me kind of gather my thoughts and ideas around Gutenberg and have helped contribute to Gutenberg development. I've got a list of resources here, uh, and the slides are available at bitly gutenprez um, if you'd like to go grab the slides with all of these resources. Cool. questions. We've got uh, plenty of time. Yeah, uh, lots of hands. Uh, I'm going to just let our volunteer here pick who goes when by, by right. shuffling the mic around. Start back and forth here. Love it. Thank you so much. So I'm just curious, you say uh, the Gutenberg plugin is buggy. Is that buggy like you can't italicize a word or buggy like your website crashes? Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, good question. Much more the former. Right, uh, it's much more, it's not even you can't tell size a word, it's I hover over a column block and I can't quite get the edge of the column, you know, because I want to select it and add a setting, right? There's still some UI quirks. Uh, there, there have been a lot of little bugs too, like when you tab from this one to this one, it skips over that, right? There's a lot of those little things just with the, because it's so new and because of the rapid pace of development. Uh, so it's much more of these small, this would frustrate an end user and will probably frustrate you for a little bit until you get the hang of the type of bugs, not it crashes your site type of bugs. Yeah. Good clarification. I am working with Divi, so how will their page build their um, interface? 
interact with Gutenberg. Yeah. So page builders are kind of rushing to figure out that out. Um, Beaver Builder published a big long post, I think nine or 12 months ago, saying we're working on it, we're trying to figure out how we coexist, how, how we do that. Um, I think the because the ultimate goal of Gutenberg is to make site and page building easier and more accessible, I really do think more than ever these at least the traditional, what you think of as Divi and, and Beaver Builder, are in more and more direct competition with one another, particularly as uh, the Gutenberg editor expands beyond the content. Uh, so I think those page builder plugins are going, are trying to figure out right now, what do we bring that WordPress core that the block-based editor and page building aren't going to do? Because that's always been their thing, right? It's like, WordPress stops here, and then we're going to pick it up and, and go forward. WordPress is pushing further into that market. Uh, so it's going to be interesting to see where they land. For you specifically, I think it'll be, can you achieve all of the things that you're achieving right now with Divi in the new block-based editor? And if so, you know, think about how you move and update into that or stay with what you've got. But you know, I'd be reading their blog. I'd be pinging them with, what are your guys' plans? What are you looking at? What's your roadmap? A lot of them may just continue to say, that's fine. They're moving into our space. We think we do it better. We, we have a product, we have a loyal customer base, and we want people to continue to use our product instead of the block-based editor, not as an add-on. Um, but a lot of that is TBD from, from a lot of those folks. I haven't seen, I know Beaver Bill is here, I haven't seen a definitive, this is how we're going to approach Gutenberg and how we're going to work in that environment, but um, I, it was a few months ago when I checked the blog. So. Yeah. How is Gutenberg going to affect the theme that would be used if you know if you're using something that's been customized and you, is perhaps older, are they going to get automatically updated or what? Yeah, it depends on your theme author and how ahead of the time they are. A lot of themes will publish updates and say we're now Gutenberg compatible, which simply means they're going to write styles that work with all of the default WordPress Gutenberg blocks. Um, the cool thing is that a theme doesn't necessarily have to be compatible. Um, that certainly allows you to, to leverage all of the different types of blocks that there are. If there's full width blocks, there's cover image blocks, if there's not, like Gutenberg ships with a bunch of styles that'll try and do it pretty well for you. So just because a theme isn't saying, oh, hey, we've updated the Gutenberg, Gutenberg compatible, doesn't necessarily mean that Gutenberg won't work fairly well for you. Uh, but uh, because it's restricted to the post content area, if you've customized a lot of other parts of your theme, Gutenberg, you know, Gutenberg's not going to mess with your header, they're not going to mess with your footer, they're not going to mess with your sidebar. It's restricted to that content area. So it's going to be, uh, you know, if I were you, I'd take a staging site um, or a local development environment and I'd activate Gutenberg and I'd write out a post and use a bunch of blocks and see how it looks, right? Use the cover image block, use the full width image block. And my hunch is it'll look pretty good, right? There might be a little bit of like, well, the full width alignment doesn't actually go full width because my theme has a couple of main wrappers around it and it doesn't allow it to go full width, and so you'll just need to decide at that point, is it worth going to a whole new theme, bugging the theme author to update and go ahead and allow, allow you to do things like that. So, uh, yeah, I think, uh, I think Matt, in his talk last weekend at WordCamp Portland, he said he's hoping that the, you know, with all of the kind of churn that's been around this, the, the the rush to push a 5.0 in Gutenberg. He's hoping it's the it's the it's the most uh, uh, anticlimactic major release ever, right? Because people will go, oh my gosh, they'll get updated and they'll be like, oh, okay, it's just a block based editor now. The content shows up in the content, and the rest of my theme looks great. Okay, I have nothing to worry about. Um, I think for most people that will probably be the case. On your how to prepare page, um, the question really is related to that. I recently, like in the last three or four days got a note from Wu mm -hmm. telling me that before I update to WordPress 5.0, I need to absolutely make sure I update WooCommerce to 3.5.1. Got it. So my question is for you and anybody else in the room, A, have you updated to WooCommerce 3.5.1 yet? I've never gotten a note from them before, so it alarmed me a little bit. And B, have you found any problems in doing so? Gotcha. I think that's probably a good hallway discussion. I have not done it, so I don't have any insights for you, but if others have updated, we, yeah, we got Meryl uh, in the purple. She's a Wukong expert. Thank you, Meryl. Uh, but yeah, you guys should meet up and talk about Wukong. Um, my hunch is that they are bringing a lot of new, Meryl, can you raise your hand again? Everybody talk to Meryl. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, 
My hunch is that they're releasing a bunch of custom blocks and a bunch of custom styles that allow you to really take advantage of the block-based architecture, and they really want you to update so that you get all of that goodness. Uh, but that's Meryl will go more. Okay. So how will it or will it affect the the actual HTML? It looks like it's more semantic or might um, encourage more semantic type of um, markup. Will it does it do that? It will impact the HTML, yeah. So uh, Gutenberg blocks output as as good old HTML. Um, a lot of the things that you do um, in the blocks output inline styles. Um, so in my example where I color coded that paragraph, right, that would output inline styles to to add out those styles to that paragraph. So it will impact the HTML, but it's the HTML within the content area of, of your of your post. Uh, so you don't have to worry about it impacting other areas of your site. You're uh, mentioning the spacer blocks yeah. triggered this. Did they? Do you know if those are at a point yet where it allows responsiveness controls quickly? No, I don't think so. Yeah. Yeah, I think you have to write media queries. Um, yeah, I think it's pixel based. So, but those sort of updates will be coming. And you can always write that uh, custom spacer block. You can take that block and add onto it and extend it. Uh, I know a lot of what they're adding in kind of some of the final beta releases, and I'm sure we'll add in on future releases, is extensibility to the default core blocks that ship with Gutenberg. And you can always spin up your own custom block and create a spacer where it allows the ends. Or, you know, responsiveness. My question is about coexistence. So, you know, first, can you have, uh, can, can you edit some pages using Gutenberg and have other pages that are with the classic editor? And number two, since I think there's about a hundred gazillion websites out there, um, can you repeat again, or are you sure that the classic editor will not ship? You have to manually install a plugin. Correct. So, first question uh, is uh, remind me. First question is coexistence. Co co can some pages? Can some pages? Right. So, I do not think that's going to ship in 5.0. But Matt specifically talked about that last week. Of they'd like to be able to add a core feature where you can turn it on or off by the author. So you're a user and you log in and you want Gutenberg, you can write with Gutenberg, somebody else from your team or who owns the site can log in and use just the classic. So my hunch is that the ability to do that is there, but it's not gonna be a core feature. You either have it turned on or turned off. Anybody feel free to chime in if, if there's, uh, if they know differently. Um, and then second was, the plug installation of the plugin not shipping with the native. Yes, it does, you have to install the plugin. Yeah, when, if you update to 5.0, you're automatically going to get Gutenberg. Um, my hunch is, I don't want to speculate whether they'll have a prompt or not to say, I'm, my hunch is they'll have a prompt to say, don't like this, you click here, install this plugin, and you'll be fine. Um, but there is one canonical classic editor plugin, that, and they said they're guaranteeing support through 2021. Um, so the classic editor will be there and available to you for a long time. To come. Yeah, sorry, and the automatic update? That will automatically take you to five. Or if you have automatic updates turned on, uh, I'm not sure if automatic updates do major releases or if they just do minor releases. That doesn't do major. Yeah, uh, it's a major 5.0 release. So if automatic updates don't do majors, then then will not. You'll have to maybe. Okay. Um, you talked about the blocks API and page template and post type templates. Yep. Is that something that's shipping with 5.0 or is that a coming? That's going to be there? Yeah, yeah, it's there. All the documentation is there. The documentation is awesome. Just WordPress.org, WAC Gutenberg, WAC Handbook, uh, and all the block API documentation there. It's really great. Uh, learning React, right, is, is because this the editor is built in React. Um, I am not a React expert at all, not a JavaScript expert at all. I spent a few weeks studying React online, and after that, I could read the block API just fine. Um, it's really, really cool. There's a couple of starter block templates out there, too. Um, and uh, yeah, I, I have my own custom block up and running in 15 or 20 minutes. Now, that came with a couple of weeks worth of studying React and learning what I was looking at in JavaScript, but um, it's, it's becoming more and more and more accessible, and they're doing a really good job of documenting. So, yeah, the handbook is a great place to start. So maybe I didn't fully understand what you just said, because my question was, am I still going to be able to look at the code behind the block 
So is there still a text spot where I can look at the code and see what it's doing? Yeah. Certain blocks, yes. So the paragraph block, there's a raw HTML block. Those blocks you can, uh, there's a little toggle and drop down saying, do you want to edit this as HTML? And then if you edit HTML, it says, do you want to edit this as a visual block? So there's still that. But for custom blocks, right, if I build a, that, like that custom speaker block, there's, they're not going to expose the HTML to you because there's mostly JavaScript going on there. The, the HTML is not even there until it's compiled and, and, and output. So, yeah. Uh, so, one of the concerns that came up a lot in the development community was, what's this going to do to my custom post types or other things like that? And uh, uh, it sounds like there's been a huge amount of progress getting MetaBlocks and all the other uh, MetaBoxes and all the other things working. Yeah. Um, I just discovered a plugin called Gutenberg RAMP, R-A-M-P, and that all it does is lets you decide for this custom post type, or this post type, do I want to use Gutenberg or not? Yeah. And that's that's a, for people who are concerned about that. That's a nice tool. It doesn't seem high impact. Absolutely, and so that's a core part of the API. So you can, in functions.php, turn Gutenberg on in different places in your site by host type. So I think that plugin is just making it easier for non non code folks to do it. And for people who are concerned about missing, not installing uh, the classic editor, isn't there a custom? Isn't there a classic block as well? There is. Well, so I don't know if it actually allows you to select classic block. But if you update, right, so if I update this, if I wrote a page in the classic editor and I update, it won't automatically turn that chunk of text from my classic editor on, say, my about page into a paragraph block. It will keep it as a, hey, you wrote this in classic mode. Do you want to go ahead and upgrade this to blocks or no? And you can decide to leave it. I don't know. Last time I looked at the UI, I didn't actually see a classic block that I could go ahead and proactively create a new classic block in, but it keeps your content into a classic block if you upgrade it with previously written content. Yeah. So uh, my company is just now getting ready to do a big redesign, revamp of the website, and yeah. that's one of the questions that I've been throwing out there is, um, are we going to be looking at um, more Gutenberg-based type things, or if we're just going to try to stick to classic editor? And it sounds like, you know, 5.0 is going to force Gutenberg. So um, would you recommend then going that route? looking at Gutenberg themes now rather than trying to figure it all out later? Yeah, I would with a, a number of caveats, right? Uh, if a customer were to ask me that, um, I would because it's it's the future of WordPress, right? You might as well get ahead of that train uh, versus be behind it. But there are a lot of caveats, right? If you, um, you know, the accessibility is, is getting there, but it's not there yet. So if that's a major, you know, requirement from your team, I would, I would take a look at that and understand how comfortable you are there. Um, I would test it and use the UI and make sure that your the team likes the UI and works for what you want to do. Um, but if I had to just black and white answer yes or no, I would definitely lean towards the let's go ahead and get ahead of this. And it's powerful. It's forward looking. Um, there's a lot of benefits to it. And you know, while there are a few drawbacks, they're not enough for me to to steer you away from. And um, how does it really work with the content migration from a classic to a Gutenberg if you're going to a whole new site? To a whole new site. So if you turn it on on a site where we have a bunch of uh, content written in classic, it'll show, hey, this content was written in classic. Do you want to upgrade this to blocks? Right? And if you say yes, let's say you have a five paragraph about page, it'll just turn it into five paragraph blocks for you. So it's pretty, pretty seamless. Got a couple up here, I think. Go ahead, I can repeat the question. Uh, so, do the like columns and galleries and things like that are they going to be responsive? Yeah. So the question is, are the call is the column block and the gallery block going to be responsive? So last time I used the column block, it was not responsive. Uh, it didn't ship with those front end styles, and I think the reason why is they want 
they want you to go ahead and fit it into the responsive break. They don't want to make any assumptions around where your, your content is going to break. So um, you have to write the, the breakpoints and the responsiveness for those columns. Um, galleries might actually, because um, you can s select for galleries how many columns, you know, two, three, four, five columns. Um, I'd have to double check there. But there's, they, Gutenberg tries to balance that line of let's make this look great for you, but let's not make too many assumptions and, and shove a bunch of CSS that you may or may not like into your front end, right? So there, there will be some things that the theme will have to take care of. Uh, so yeah, Gut Gutenberg compatible themes should ship with all of the styles to make all of those default blocks work. And if you're building a theme from scratch, uh, part of the testing process will be activating all the blocks and writing styles to make sure columns, right? Two, three, four, five, six. And the columns use Flexbox, so they're, they're pretty great. Okay, uh, two questions. One with you giving us the link for the slides, is that because these are more current slides than what are on the WordCamp site? Yeah. Sure, I heard somebody say yes. Okay, and then two, uh, can you detail more what you mean about accessibility? My team also is about ready to do a major upgrade, and I work for WSU, and access our site has to be accessible. Yep. Yeah, so there's been a lot of community discussion over the, over the last couple of months around the accessibility of the block-based editor itself. So we're talking about the admin, not the front end. Not the front end. Yeah, the front end is still the theme's responsibility to ensure the, out, out, the, the markup and the outfit and all the styles and everything are accessible. It's specifically around the accessibility of the block-based editor itself. Yep. Is React used always to render the blocks or just as a preview in the editor? I'm wondering about server-side rendering and SEO. Yeah, so not an expert, but I believe, yes, React is used to render the blocks, and it's the same. The cool thing about Gutenberg is that it's the same thing that you're getting on the back end as what you're getting on the front end, so you're getting the same output. Um, but yeah, React is used. Any more questions? Great questions, you guys. Thank you. All right. Well, thank you. Thanks for coming.